You can still hear the screaming, the screaming of the Rams. That game was so lopsided, it became anticlimactic in the second <laughs> half, which I did not expect. I, you and I talked about this before the show. We were talking about it last week. Very winnable game for the Cardinals. There was a lot of that, like, okay, you never know. Like, we were talking about going into week one. Maybe Marv's just uncoverable on some plays, and then, you know, week one happened. (laughs) It all happened yesterday. What a just thorough beatdown of the Rams. No, it really was. And, you know, once again, uh, yeah, I I felt like the Arizona Cardinals. Remember the week before, I thought they had a a 40% chance of upsetting the Buffalo Bills on the road right there. Well, I felt like they had a 60% chance of beating the Rams at home, kind of, right? You just you, you felt good about the possibilities of them winning a game. Never in a million years, Basin Orleans, did I see the kind of performance that we saw yesterday. This game played by the Arizona Cardinals against the Rams um, at State Farm Stadium We have not seen a complete game like this from the Arizona Cardinals in the Kyler Murray era. That's the way I feel. This was the best regular season game they have played. I agree. I I, I don't know how you can disagree with it. I'd be interested to hear the people that are perpetually critical of Kyler Murray. And not the ones like, oh, okay, he could have done this differently or this or that. But the ones that are like, he'll never be good. The ones that are like, he's too short, he can't see the field. Did you watch the game yesterday? Yeah. What, what is what is your comeback to that? I understand the Rams were a little beat up. So were the Cardinals, by the way, beat up going into that game. The Rams might be the just unlucky beat up team this year, too, because they lose Cooper Cup. But to go out there and handle the Rams the way they did, Kyler Murray's passer rating is perfect. It's perfect. His distribution among the receivers and his targets and his weapons, that looked about perfect. What is he it, it, the first half of the of the first two games and and I, I hesitate to give the stack cuz he he carried it into the second half yesterday but his first half numbers he's like 26 for 31 for 322 yards four touchdowns no interceptions yeah. pretty good way to start the games Yeah there there's no doubt about it uh Kyler Murray got off um the best game that I've seen Kyler Murray play in the regular season right there the best game that I've seen seen him play a perfect passer rating, as you said. But more than that, it was the decision making of Kyler Murray that was as good as anything that anybody has ever shown on a football field. This kid, when when to pull the ball down and try to extend the play, when to actually pull the ball down and try to run reading the coverage, going through his progression, making a decision as to where he was going to throw the ball. There was the scheduled and the unscheduled of Kyla Murray, and all of it, all of it came together for him to play what I thought was the most efficient I have seen him play as a quarterback. This, this guy was on fire. There's no, The throws that he made, he made about three or four throws in this game that just made you go, oh, my gosh. I mean, how many people on the face of the planet are there that can actually pull off what Kyla Murray just did in terms of scrambling around the pocket and actually finding somebody and throwing the ball? Oh, you mean there the Elijah are, Higgins touchdown? There are, yes, there are people <laughs> that can do it. There's no denying that, base Onions. There are quarterbacks that can do that. But um, I don't know if we've seen a better performance from Kyla Murray, and I don't know if we've seen a more complete game in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams, than what we saw from the Cardinals yesterday. If you watched and you said it in there, his ability to not just run but to know when to run. That game didn't rely on Kyler Murray running, yes. but he did pull the ball down and run five times for 59 yards. If he can find that balance the way he did yesterday, and honestly, Wolf, the way he has been doing it since Drew Petzing got here, and we saw this at times last year, but you were, you're just always kind of like, all right, you know, how much can we really read into this? But now he's doing it in meaningful games. If he can find that balance, he's one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the league. I'm not saying he's the best quarterback in yeah, the league, right. but I'm saying in terms dangerous. of, of – Yeah, because to me, <laughs> if they have a designed run for him, that's fine. He's really fast, whatever. But it's it's more the like, okay, drop back. Okay, Marv's covered. Okay, and Trey McBride's covered. Oh, well, we need seven yards. I'll just run for eight. He can do that, but he doesn't have to do it now. And the passing – Man, it, we'll get into Marv a lot throughout the show, certainly. But was yesterday not everything 
that the most optimistic Cardinals fan would let your mind wander to since they took Marv in April? Not just what he could do, but what it does in terms of opening up the entire offense. Yes, no, that's well said right there. It really is. Um, and this is, boy, you, this is a, uh, we know it. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, a lot of times uh, you got to win, right? Base on Onions, you got to win. You win and they will come. <laughs> You win, and they will show up. They'll find a way. There's so much to do in the state of Arizona in the Southwest, and guess what? It's only going to get worse. It's going to get more beautiful and more beautiful, and there's a lot you can do on the weekend. Well, you know what? If you win as well, people are going to start showing up in droves, and especially when you've got an exciting, young, rookie, wide receiver who starts playing the way that we saw Marvin Harrison Jr. play, who reminds some people of Larry Fitzgerald. They're gonna start they're gonna start showing up. The excitement factor. I mean, this I, I look at teams sometimes like this where if you're just watching football on Sunday and you don't have a team, or let's say your team's playing Monday night, right? And you got Sunday ticket, which team are you gonna put on? The Cardinals are gonna quickly climb that 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 chart, that list of like, okay. I'm just going to watch some exciting football. If you're not really invested in the car, okay, I'm going to watch. Because now, Wolf, you're talking about the highest scoring team through the first, second highest scoring team through the first two weeks, only to New Orleans, who played Carolina in week one. I'm not trying to take away from what New Orleans has done. And then no, I, yeah. I, I think that was Dallas yesterday. It might have been Carolina in the Cowboys uniforms. I don't know. But the way the Cardinals, they're just, they look like a video game when yeah. their offense is humming. And their offense was humming in the first half of last week's game, too. Yeah, but the best part about their offense was the fact they just bloodied the face of the Los Angeles. And yeah, you got what you wanted to do. I'm just saying right now, <laughs> this way, honestly, you know, when we're talking about all of this, uh, you, you base it on means, you know, when you win, you got to wallow in it from time to time. Don't you? Dude, they never beat the Rams. <laughs> they didn't beat the Rams saying. in Arizona since it? since the Rams were the St. Louis Rams in 2014. 2014. Listen, some, here's some oh of these goodness. stats, okay. that, that, the streaks so, that ended So it's yesterday. okay to roll in it. Yes. That's what you're saying, right? So now. they were 2-13 and 13 <laughs> in their last 15 against the Rams. They hadn't beat the Rams in Arizona since 2014. Okay, 2014. They were 3-19 and 19 in their last 22 at home overall. They were 1-11 and 11 in the division over the last two years. Yeah. And they handed Sean McVay his most lopsided loss ever yes. yesterday oh boy that is ever that's what okay, they said I did not know that that's what they said okay can i also say this right now from a tactical perspective from a football perspective the blood sport based on audience what i love the most about it did you happen to notice how the arizona cardinals tried to run the ball against the rams how they did it <laughs> not only did they line up, uh, how many rushing attempts did the Arizona Cardinals have? Uh, I believe it was 40. It was, it was 40. Was that the number? The number was 40. <laughs> 40. 40, the number of trial, the number of testing, as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen. Well, they were testing that Rams 40 defense. days and 40 nights. Isn't that right? You know what? Um, 40 times they ran the ball, and they averaged 5.8 yards per carry. That's <laughs> somebody pass the Kleenex right now because that's the most beautiful thing. Yet all of this talent was on display with Kyler Murray and what Kyler Murray was doing and what Marvin Harrison Jr. was doing and what James Conner was doing. There was all this talent that was on display. Trey McBride. And yet it came down to running the ball 40 times. The best thing I could say about that performance yesterday, and I think we would all agree, it didn't even seem like the Rams were there. Like, maybe the first drive or two, and then it just felt like the Cardinals were out there doing things, and the Rams were kind of there watching. That's what it felt like. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.